My name is Alex Shalik. I work for Hong Kong Park over at Harvard University, and the focus of my research is on applying nanotechnology to biological systems. When we uh, study biological systems, what we do is we try and infer how they respond to change. And so this technology that we have is a very simple way of doing that. It's basically a bed of nanoneedles that do nothing more than inject molecules into cells. So they're basically syringes for cells. And so by either putting something that blocks a particular molecule or putting in something that increases the level of a molecule, we have ways of dialing down or dialing up its level. And that gives us a way of actually inferring what its function is. These cells that we work with are actually immune cells, and they're obviously incredibly important clinically. Um, but because your immune system is actually set up to notice foreign invaders, to look at viruses, to know when things aren't correct, a lot of the strategies that we would use, like artificial viruses for perturbing cells, aren't applicable here. They recognize them, it sets off the alarms, and we can't actually study how the cells respond to things because they're already in the process of responding. So it turns out that this technique, which you would think is actually invasive, isn't. Now this is not the first time that people have tried to inject things into cells. There's a way that people do it conventionally, which is with a pipette. They bring it in just in the same way you would uh, do, say, in vitro fertilization. But the problem with that is it's very slow and laborious because you have to bring in this one pipette to one cell, one at a time. And that's not the kind of throughput that you can use to do biology. In the particular image that you have here, we were actually looking at viability in a human leukemia, CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Um, we were working in collaboration with Kathy Wu's group over at the Dana-Farber. In doing some gene expression, they'd come across this idea that the Wnt signaling pathway was actually contributing to the viability of these cells. And they wanted to test this, and the easiest way to do that is to block Wnt signaling. They had no way of doing this. So they came to us, and we actually used these nanowires to inject siRNAs into these cells to block different members of the Wnt signaling pathway. And by doing that, we were able to actually confirm that Wnt was important for viability, but in so doing, we actually discovered something very interesting, which was that different patients responded in different ways. And so this sort of gets to the heart of what you hear about all the time, personalized medicine. It's that everybody's cancers are a little different. The science that we're doing here isn't actually what we originally developed this technology to do. When, um, when we came in and we started developing it, we were actually interested in using these as voltage probes so that we could study how brain cells signal to one another. But we saw that we were getting inside of the cells, we saw that we had access, and um, sometimes you just follow where the science takes you. 